Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to one of our features on YouTube called You Make the Call. And here's our latest edition of You Make the Call. I have 10 cases. You're going to see one slide, which means two images, and you got to give me the best answer. Minimal history. Just tell me what you're thinking, and let's go from there. Well, let's get started. This was an incidental finding on a CT scan of the abdomen. There's a calcified mass, or at least partially calcified, in the right lobe of the liver. The patient has no known malignancy. What could it be? Well, I know you're going to say, maybe it's malignancy. Maybe it's hepatoma with calcifications, though it's a bit coarse. Maybe it's mucinous adenocarcinoma of the colon metastatic to liver. That also gives you faint calcifications. Maybe it's a biliary cyst adenoma. That can also calcify. Maybe it's a sequela of old infection. Maybe it's hydatid disease. Maybe it's an old abscess which had a drain in place and bled and had calcification. Well, what if I tell you this is a tumor? Well, what is it? Dense calcification, essentially minimal or no enhancement. What was this? A sclerosed hemangioma. Sclerosed hemangiomas are rare. They can be difficult. They can be confused with metastasis, and often the only way to make the diagnosis is at surgery with resection. They can be low-density lesions, minimal to no enhancement, and coarse calcifications. A really great diagnosis, but a very difficult diagnosis. This is a great case. Younger patient, hypervascular lesion in the liver, and it looks like nodes in the porta hepatis. What are we dealing with? Well, it does not have the look of FNH, which is enhancing but homogeneous. Again, the nodes kind of put you in the malignancy category, so FNH is not going to happen. This is not the enhancement of hemangioma. It's truthfully not the enhancement of hepatic adenoma unless the patient had developed a hepatoma already. Uh, cholangiocarcinoma is too vascular. Hepatoma is a good thought. Metastasis is a good thought. Maybe a neuroendocrine tumor with nodes, peripancreatic, and liver. This patient was younger. When you see a vascular lesion in a woman especially, but patients in their teens or 20s, you got to be thinking about a fibrolamella hepatoma, very vascular. The nodes are very vascular. An aggressive tumor. And that's what the diagnosis was, fibrolamella hepatoma. Great case. This patient has back pain, and what do you see? A mass in the mesentery. The mass is solid and cystic. It kind of looks like nodes. What gives you nodes in the mesentery that can be cystic? Well, of course, you think of malignancy like lymphoma, but then typically to be cystic, it needs to be treated so you can get cystic Hodgkin's. You also could think about carcinoid tumor. Those typically aren't cystic. There's desmoplastic reaction, and they're vascular. It doesn't quite look like this. So what else can give you nodes? Whipple's disease, many different infections. Two of the things you think about, of course, um, you can think about sclerosing mesenteritis, but then you typically have really dense calcifications in better than 70% of cases. Remember, carcinoid, also 70% has calcification. You got to think of things like infection. TB or MAI are good thoughts. TB commonly gives cystic nodes. So can MAI. Stranding in the mesentery, adjacent bowel involvement are all possible. Well, your answer? This was TB. Solid and cystic nodes in the mesentery, you got to think about TB. More common um, in patients immunosuppressed, more common in HIV patients, but MAI is also a good diagnosis, especially in patients or HIV, or who have AIDS. What about this case? This is a companion case to the prior study. There's a mass in the mesentery. There's some vascularity to it. There's some irregular vessels on the coronal views. It's enhancing. So what I'm trying to push you to is to say a carcinoid tumor. That's a good thought, but there's not the desmoplastic reaction of a carcinoid tumor, so that makes it a little bit less likely. It doesn't have the appearance of TB or MAI because it's solid and enhancing. We would go through that differential of sclerosis mesenteritis, again, most commonly calcified. We'll, be, we'll, go to, we'll go to carcinoid. We'll go even to lymphoma. 
Well, when you keep going down the list, there are other things you can think about. And so if you gave the differential I just mentioned, I'll give you credit. But a mass in the mesentery that's slightly vascular, you got to think about Castleman's disease. It can give nodes in the chest, in the abdomen, in the pelvis, but not uncommonly presents with a mesenteric mass, slight vascularity, and just a great case. What about this case? Well, the first thing you notice, the patient has an absent left kidney, and I will tell you the patient had a nephrectomy. You then look and there's a soft tissue mass at about the L2 level in the spinal canal. You look particularly at the sagittal view. You see it's a nodule, there's a vessel going to it. What are we dealing with? Left nephrectomy means renal cell carcinoma in all likelihood, particularly when I'm showing you two images only. So you gotta say when you have renal cell, especially clear cell, you get metastasis to muscle, to bone, to pancreas, contralateral kidney, adrenal, bowel, stomach, all are vascular. This is a good example, or a great example, I should say, of clear cell metastatic to the spinal cord. Again, we don't think about it that way. We think about METs to bone, but you can get METs to the spinal cord. Easy to overlook in the axial views because we tend not to look at those images. What a great case. Metastatic RCC to the spinal cord. Just a great case. What about this case? Two kidneys, multiple lesions. First thing you got to think about multiple lesions without even looking, cysts, multiple tumors. But when you start looking, you also notice that many of the lesions are soft tissue density, but many of these are fat density. Yes, you can see fat and renal cell carcinoma, but there are multiple lesions in both kidneys with fat. What do you think about when you th see multiple hepatic, it could be hepatic, multiple renal lesions? These patients also do get hepatic. Uh, fatty tumors. Well, you got to be thinking of one thing and only one thing, tuberous sclerosis. Multiple renal angiomyelipomas of variable sizes, variable fat content. Yes, they can get lipomas in the liver, but they're usually small and only a few. Patients can get incidental renal angiomyelipomas, typically females in their 40s or 50s, but then it's usually one lesion. Just a great case. What about this case? The patient has hematuria and there are calculi present. So obviously, I'm not going to give you a case of just renal calculi. Think about where are those calcifications. They look like they're layering out a cyst. Perhaps it's simply a cyst that has calcification. That can be possible. This is where the contrast scans will help you, but there's something you should think of. When you see a cluster of calcifications in the periphery of the kidney, and as looks like it's in some cystic lesion, you got to be thinking of, of, what am I thinking of? Well, let me show you another image. That's the image I gave you, but look with contrast. You can see what this patient has in the upper pole of the left kidney is the patient has a calocele diverticulum. Oh yes, by the way, the patient also has in both kidneys papillary necrosis, but it's that diverticulum. Remember, diverticulum can contain calcification, can contain fluid, can be confusing, almost simulate transitional cell carcinoma. A wonderful case and beautiful example of papillary necrosis. Patient with abdominal pain, you see a cystic mass or relatively a low density mass in the midline. The key thing here is where does the mass come from? You could say, well, maybe it's the mesentery pushing on the stomach. But when you see a large mass, can be solid or a little bit lower density like this case, you got to be thinking this mass is coming off the stomach. If it's coming off the stomach, then it's going to be a gist tumor. Maybe metastatic disease like melanoma, maybe lymphoma can push against the stomach. But here it's really the epicenter. You got to be thinking about that. So what's this going to be? What's your call? You said just, you were right. Just tumors are often vascular. They can be cystic. They're more commonly cystic after they've been treated with Gleevec. They can bleed. They can ulcerate. They can be intraluminal or extraluminal. Most cases like this one is extraluminal or they can be somewhat mixed. What about this case? 
There's a calcified mass. At first glance, you might think it's pancreas, then you would worry about a neuroendocrine tumor. But then when you look at the coronal, you realize it's coming off the stomach. What masses are calcified that come off the stomach? Old hematomas, that's really rare. What tumor? Well, I just showed you gist tumors. Well, gist tumors, as well as just classic gliomyomas, can calcify. They can be exophytic, and that's what this was. Now, you could have said, well, maybe it's nodes, maybe old hematoma, maybe some other sort of tumor, but not many things calcify so dense. And surely, once you make the decision, it's probably intimately related to the stomach. The answer of a lyomyoma or even of a gist tumor is what you're thinking about, which this, in fact, was. I do like the diagnosis of lyomyoma when I see small lesions that have some calcification or dense calcification. What about this case? Chest pain post-MVA. What you see is a hematoma around the distal arch and descending thoracic aorta, and you see on the image on your right what looks like a cleft. This patient surely has had trauma. There's injury to the aorta with bleed. This is best seen on the sagittal views. So what are we dealing with? Well, we're dealing with a transection. Now, it's hard to see it or its full extent only on the axial. Now, you should make the diagnosis on the axial with the hematoma, but look at the sagittal when you get the cinematic. You can see just past the left subclavian artery in the classic location at the ductus zone for trauma, there's a linear line that's a transection of the patient's aorta. And here's the same patient after a stent was placed. You make the diagnosis early, the patient ends up being lucky because they made it to CT uh, to begin with. Some of these patients just die in the field, but beautiful example of repair with an endovascular stent. Well, that's 10 cases. How much more do you want from me? Well, more. Well, I'll give you more, but not today. But I will wish you a great day, and I hope you enjoy the cases. See you later. Bye. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.